Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. We all love a good life hack, something that makes your time a lot easier, but takes little to no effort or money. And the same is true with filmmaking. I don't know if you realize this, but filmmaking is a really expensive profession. Everything from cameras to lights, stabilizers, tripods, C-stands, memory cards, editing computers. It all adds up really quickly. So today we're gonna save time, energy, and money by using these five simple filmmaking hacks. You may have seen a couple of these floating around before, but I'm pretty sure that at least a couple of them are gonna be brand new to you. So let's start it off with number one, use a neck strap. This one's gotten popular a little bit more recently. If you're like me, you got your first DSLR, took one look at it and said, a neck strap? Nah, that's for photographers. I make videos. And immediately threw it into the corner. But this can really help you to get some extra points of stabilization to get a really smooth shot. And the best part is that it comes free with your camera. With your neck strap on your camera, pull the camera until the strap goes tight around your neck and then keep some tension as you go through your motion. This will help to get rid of any of the jitters that you'd normally have just by free holding the camera. Now, here's the biggest part is that this actually might not get you your perfect shot, but it gets your shot to the point where it's way more smooth and free of that jitter and rolling shutter. Once it passes this threshold of stability, just capturing it raw, adding a warp stabilizer effect in either Premiere Pro or After Effects will be way more successful and can give you some absolutely unreal results. Also, if you're interested, check out this other video that we did on another method to getting a really smooth shot, especially if you have no gimbal or stabilization unit. Number two, fishing wire. If you've seen any of these lists on the internet before, you've probably come across the classic fishing line over the lens trick, but it's just so cheap and effective, we had to include it. I got a whole roll of fishing line for like three bucks and you only need a fraction of it to actually put on your lens. So what does it do? Well, tape some clear fishing line going exactly vertical over your lens. And when you shoot in front of an intense concentrated light source, you get an anamorphic style lens flare. It's so cool. Keep in mind though, that if you use this on a lens under 50 millimeters, you're probably gonna get this effect where the lens flare ends before the edge of the frame, but your mileage may vary. Also try to do this on only prime lenses as the lower the f-stop, the better the effect will come across but why wouldn't you just add a lens flare in post? Well, there's a lot of work that you would have to do, not only matching the lens flare to the environment, but also tracking it with the original light source. And unless your name is Andrew Kramer, you're probably gonna have to pay full price for a high quality pack of lens flares. Number three, rubber band. If you have a tripod that doesn't have a nice fluid head on it, it can be really frustrated to try and get a nice smooth pan only to see that it's jittery and jerky and it doesn't have that smooth motion that you were hoping for. But an easy way to get around that is with a rubber band. Wrap one end around your tripod handle and now all of the motion is evenly applied to your tripod head. It's all gradual and smoothed out because you're not actually touching the tripod. It's all going through the rubber band. Number four, mask out your microphone. This one actually isn't a physical hack, it's a digital one. You may know that the best way to get good quality audio is to get your microphone as close as possible to your subject. And that's why lavalier microphones are such a great tool. But let's say that you've just got a standard shotgun microphone and you wanna get it as close to your subject as possible, but you also wanna capture a really wide shot like this. What do you do? Well, bring it right into frame and get it up close and personal to your subject. Wait, what, really? Yeah. Just make sure that it doesn't cross the frame of your actor or the other way around. As long as there's distance at all time between the two, and as long as the background isn't moving like crazy, you can actually mask out this shot in post. Bring your shot into Premiere and make sure that at some point in time, you have the same shot with the same lighting, but a clean plate with no microphone. Take that sample and bring it to the bottom layer and add a frame hold. And now put your normal clip over top. Now mask out the microphone with your pen tool on your main footage layer. Lastly, feather it just a tad, and the result is that you get the quality of a really close microphone without actually seeing it in your shot. And number five, dragging with a blanket. I don't know about you, but I've read a bunch of different places this idea of using a wheelchair as a makeshift dolly, which sounds really cool, but the question is, who has a wheelchair? And how do you even get access to one? You know what everybody does have? An old, dirty blanket and usually use a wheelchair on a flat, smooth surface, so we're gonna use a blanket on that surface instead. Have your camera operator sit or lay down on the blanket, then get a second pair of hands to drag you across the floor. It's that simple. The result is surprisingly smooth footage because all of the jittering of the walking is done by a person who's not the camera operator, and those jitters don't translate all the way through a blanket and a body to the camera. So as stable as you're able to hold the camera on your own is as stable as you can get the final result. This also lets you get super low to the ground for some epic foot level shots. 
And guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys like this video, consider giving it a like, subscribing to our channel, or even sharing this video with a fellow video editor friend. And if you really want to take a look at all of our other work, it's over at motionarray.com. And I can't wait to see you in the next video.